Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I have a special episode today. We're gonna talk about how to have a five-star marriage with a very special guest. And we're gonna dive into what is the vision you have for your marriage, principles to take marriage to a whole new level, and what to bring to your relationship every day. So again, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. Over the past 20 years, I have been doing this, which is shocking to say out loud, but (laughs) I have developed a weight loss program where there are no pills, there's no potions, there are no diets to follow because I am on a mission to squash the dieters mentality. There's also no insane workouts and no massive cardio. With my background as a professional ballet dancer and teacher, I also have a medical degree in physical therapy. I'm a personal trainer and a health coach. I have really boiled weight loss down to doing three things fueling your body, moving your body, and managing your mind. And that managing your mind, I think, is the secret sauce to this all. Because if you don't have that in check, the other pieces do not work. So I know you're tired of battling your weight, and you don't have to anymore. Imagine six months from now, you are in a calm and relaxed space where you're comfortable around your favorite foods. You're able to do daily activities like walking upstairs without being out of breath. And you're having more fun because you no longer feel like a prisoner in your body. And you know exactly how to lose weight and maintain it, even if you're on vacation, even if you're on holiday, even if you're busy at work, even if your kids are driving you crazy, even if it's a Tuesday. If you are serious about your health and wellness and you're ready to lose weight for the last time, I want to invite you to schedule a call with me. Go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call and schedule your discovery call today. So let's dive into the topic, how to have a five-star marriage. So my special guest today is a life coach and modern marriage mentor who specializes in helping driven, ambitious women create their marriages of their dreams without waiting for their partners to change or adding more work to their lives. She is the creator of the Marriage MBA program, a six-month mentorship in creating a successful marriage using principles from positive psychology, cognitive science, and simple coaching tools that you can learn today and apply tomorrow. She is also the author of the best-selling Questions for Couples journal and the host of the top 100 The Marriage Life Coach podcast. When she isn't teaching or coaching, she loves reading fan fiction and watching superhero movies with her hubby. So welcome, Maggie Reyes, to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, everyone. And Nicole and I just had to talk superheroes before we started recording. So our our love (laughs) for superheroes is strong. (laughs) We sure did. (laughs) It's so funny because like, I think Um, you know, I think superheroes were considered like teenage boys stuff. And now that like this new generation of all kinds of superheroes are coming out, especially strong female, you know, superheroes. And I think it's also like dismantling the patriarchy and the mindset that it's like, oh, superheroes are for boys instead of for girls. And that whole way of thinking, I think is just thank, thankfully, because of conversations like this one and the ways that people are thinking now, that's just something that we're working through where it's not even true. I remember seeing a documentary about like the Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. And if you think about a Barbie doll, we call it a doll. But if you think about GI Joe, we call it an action figure. figure, Yes. But it's a doll, right? (laughs) It's so interesting. And when we think about whether it's your relationship or weight loss or whatever it is that you're focused on, how we talk about things determines how we think about things. Mm -hmm. In Mm -hmm. ways we don't even realize, right? So it's like, next time you see an action figure, just remember it's a doll. And how about (laughs) if we look at a Barbie doll and say, hey, she's an action figure. Yeah. Well, you know, they're not going to call a a boy's doll a doll back then, for sure. There was no way that would be called. It's funny that you mentioned that because um, as a kid, I loved Wonder Woman. And I. Carter, right? And yeah. I had the Wonder Woman, you know, where her yeah. physique was very <laughs> yeah. voluptuous at top and then very yeah. narrow. And then she had yeah. these weird fingers. I don't know. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. 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 Wonder Woman was awesome. Wonder okay. Woman was awesome. I yeah. love that they brought Linda Carter back on, um, what was it? Um, Supergirl. Yes. I love that. 
yeah. like paying homage to as many things as they can pay homage to on those different superheroes yeah, we're all that yeah. we, we might have to do that? like a whole other episode i know i know that. we have to <laughs> do Super a marvel episode and fitness for... <laughs> and marriage we'll figure it out <laughs> right right <laughs> so maggie tell everyone how you a little bit about yourself and how you got started on the business that you do Oh, sure. So I am a life coach and marriage mentor. I help type A women have better marriages. I run a program called the Marriage MBA, where it's basically, I like to think about it just like an MBA. It's like, how do you run a business? You don't really know until you study it. And we all have relationships, but we don't really know what we're doing until we study it. Um, So that's what I do now. I used to work in HR for many years. I was the training director in a law firm, and then I was a recruitment manager in luxury hospitality. And I always like to joke that I've been talking people off ledges my entire career. The only thing that has changed is which ledge I'm talking them off of. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's in a nutshell, um, sort of some of my background. So when I was um when I got married, when I met my husband, I had this moment of, of realization, like that moment where you know you're doing exactly what you need to be doing in the right place at the right time. You're just like in the total flow of life. And I know for some people that happens with your profession, for some, maybe it's with your children or with a hobby that you love doing. Like you mentioned that you did like ballet, like you're in that flow where just everything is like you're one with the universe. And I really felt that with my husband. And the moment that I felt it, I also felt everything in my life that wasn't that. Mm -hmm. And that sort of set me off on a path to discover what do I want to do in my next chapter? And then I landed on coaching and here we are. Here we are. And you're killing it. (laughs) Thank you. you. So let's dive into the topic. So how to have a five-star marriage. Yes. So I used to work in luxury hospitality, as I mentioned, and, um, things like the Ritz Carlton, the Four Seasons, the service standards that they have and why they have them and how they work was something that we would just talk about a lot in the different uh, meetings that I was in and things that we were doing. And when I went to do marriage work, I really thought about, we sort of, unless we intentionally think about our relationships, it's very easy to be in a motel marriage. That's what I call it. It's kind of like, it's what's there, it's convenient. It's on the side of the road. You know, there's a bed, there's a shower, you can sleep, but like the sheets are a little scratchy and the food's a little stale. And you know, the, what's supposed to be hot is cold and what's supposed to be cold is hot, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, what would a five-star marriage be like? And I really started thinking about some of the parallels of how hotels at that level are run and how that can impact if we take that thinking into our marriages. And then as I got more and more deeper into hospitality and into really thinking about this in a, in a deeper level, um, it sort of took me full circle because those hotels are run based on um, the customs of the original hotels back in the day that it was a warm welcome. Mm-hmm. It was like making you feel at home away from home. Like so many of the same principles are the same, which started at home right? Like the whole idea of hospitality is to create or recreate a welcome home feeling. So it was kind of a little trippy when I started thinking about it. It's like, we take this thing we used to do over here, then we brought it over there. Now we're bringing it back this way. Um, So I just started thinking about what hotels do intentionally. And then I broke it down into these seven things that I noticed. And then how does that relate to what we can do intentionally? So the first one is to decide right? It's like, what is your vision for your marriage? Most of us don't have one. Like I wouldn't have one unless I started thinking about these things, right? I would just, I, I liked my husband. He was nice and kind. Let's do this, <laughs> Let's right? Let's do this, right? <laughs> Let's do this. Um, and that's most of us, right? But it's like, what matters to us? So to give you an example, so in a hotel, if you go to a place like a St. Regis or something like that, they will answer within three rings. They will always answer within three rings. It, like the building must be on fire if it takes them the fourth ring. Why? Because they decided that part of a warm welcome was that you're immediately attended to, like, and now then they operationalized it, mm. right? And so I like to think about that as like, what is the vision and then how do we operationalize it? So for example, for me as a coach, I don't do classes or podcast interviews or things like at night most of the time. I'll occasionally make an exception every now and then, but I don't do my work regular work schedule that way. 
why it's my equivalent of my three rings it's like that time is set aside for my husband to watch superhero shows or movies or whatever we want to do and hang out and so i have taken this value which is i want to have together time with my husband and then i have operationalized it by having whether it's a rule or like a general guideline that i follow of i do this thing most of the time because this thing matters to me. Yeah. so for everyone listening just think about when you think about what's your vision for your marriage it's like just think about one thing that matters to you and how do you operationalize it yeah, yeah i love that because i think that when you get married, like I've been married for 18 years, like, you know, there comes a point where you're almost too comfortable Mm -hmm. and you don't prioritize that time that is spent. And it kind of, and I have kids and, you know, and you're busy running around with kids and doing all the things and you just kind of like, yeah, motel six, here we go. (laughs) And it's very easy. Like, let's think about even like that idea of like a St. Regis. It's very easy to let the phone ring six times. If we don't do it on purpose as a rule, as like, this is how we work here, it's very, yeah. there will always be distractions and things going on where you would change that thing. So it's the same with us, whether it's having kids, changing careers, starting a business, like making it a project to get fit, these different things in our lives. It's like, oh, all, there will always be these things. Mm-hmm. What do we want to stand for while these things are happening? And this is one way in to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. And what your priorities are and how. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So you ready for the second one? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the second one, I call it decluttering. And if you think of any fancy place that would be a five-star hotel level, um, they're, they are neat places, right? Like they don't have the garbage at the front door, or like something like that. It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't smell like whatever they cooked in the kitchen. Like you don't <laughs> open the door and there's like fish smell or whatever. <laughs> So there's like physical decluttering to be done, right? So in our homes, um, sometimes we're messy and it's like, is that conducive to the vision that you have? Like, do we need to declutter something, get rid of things? Also, like I've lived in the same house for 14 years and we're at that stage where like, we have amassed a bunch of things that ended up we didn't use, Mm -hmm. right? Like Mm -hmm. we thought we might use it someday. (laughs) Someday has come and gone. We have survived a pandemic and we didn't use it. We probably need to get rid of it, right? Yeah. Um, So I think about decluttering in the physical sense, but I also think about emotional decluttering. Mm. What is emotional decluttering? It is looking at the things you're holding on to long past their expiration date. It is deciding, is there something to forgive? Is there something to make amends for? Sometimes we have something that we're ha- is heavy in our heart and we need to look at it and say, hey, I actually, I want to make this right. How can I make-? So sometimes it's forgiving someone else. Sometimes it's forgiving ourselves. But the idea that there's something emotionally that's holding us back from connecting with our partner and what do we need to declutter in order to make that connection stronger? Yeah, I feel like uh, mindset work really comes into this because... Yeah a lot of women are operating on like default thinking and they don't see what they need to forgive or like things that might be a problem that they just think is part of being married. Yeah. That's like, our standards are so low. It's like, oh, all this low grade frustration is just part of being married. No, this is a cultural narrative that is not true. The ball and chain. Yeah. Hate that expression, right? (laughs) As a marriage coach, everyone just feel me. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like this is the cultural narrative around what relationships can be, as opposed to what if it's this most amazing, I call it sexy besties. What if it's the Mm -hmm. most fun part of your life? What if it's a sanctuary in your life? Like what if it is like a five-star hotel and you do feel like a sanctuary when you come home and if and if you don't let's like let's investigate why so the the emotional decluttering is also this place where we can start investigating well what is in between me and feeling that way and just bringing awareness to like okay these are all the things that have happened these are all the issues that we need to now we go one by one gently and lovingly right (laughs) do I want to keep this do I want to (laughs) keep this what was that um, does it inspire joy like Marie Kondo, right? Like <laughs> if it doesn't inspire joy, why am I keeping why it? Why keeping What's it? Going yeah. On? All of that part. And this is not easy, right? Like just like fitness and weight loss and those things. These are things that when we start uncovering the layers, 
it can feel challenging, it can feel confronting, it can feel difficult. And then that's why we have programs like the programs that we run and do the things that we do to help people step by step as they uncover and work through these things. So do you have any more of those you want to share oh, or? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> of course, there's seven of them. Um, and we'll kind of go through them and we'll, I'll send you the link. I have a podcast episode called The Five Star Marriage where if anybody wants to hear like in depth each yeah. one, they can um, use that link and they can just hear me talk about each one. But um, the next one is the idea of bringing your best self to your relationship. So very often we lead with our wounds. Mm. It's just what's there, right? If I, if I suddenly, you know, cut myself open and was bleeding, I would be leading with that, right? Yeah. I would need to get that mended before I could do other things. But because our, uh, so many of our wounds are internal, we don't realize we're just walking around bleeding on people. Mm. And we need to like attend to ourselves, find out what we need to figure out there. And then how can we bring our best self to our relationship that doesn't mean you only bring your best self that doesn't mean you never bring your wounds like that it's not about that but it's like a lot of the times we default to the opposite where we bring our worst self all the time mm. and if you think about if i was in a hotel like um people are dressed in a uniform they like there's an element of taking care of how you're presenting whatever you're presenting even when there's a problem so it's not about perfection or or never having an issue it's just being intentional about what you're bringing right yeah um of, i was go just ahead. gonna say one of the yeah. things that i personally have been working on but i'm also um helping my clients with in the sense of like you know especially with weight loss there's a lot of shame and judgment that comes with it and kind of like stepping into like, how do you want to show up? Even if you're not like the person that you quote unquote want to be yet, like, how are you showing up in your everyday? How are you showing up as the person that you want to become? And I think that as, um, like, I love the fact with relationships, like the other person does not have to change. Right. It really starts with you. And once you learn to kind of love yourself and heal those wounds and figure out, okay, this is who I want to be, then it's like, then it's, I feel it's a little bit more open for conversation because you're coming from a, a more authentic space rather than like victim mentality. And I know someone listening will think, what do you mean? The other person doesn't have to change. They were mean to me yesterday. We need to question all of it, right? There are situations where if someone is really uh, like violating your values and going against things you believe in, then we need to ask yourself, we need to ask ourselves or yourself, why are you allowing that behavior? Like, what are you accepting that is unacceptable? That could be a place we take our brain, mm -hmm. but it could be, you know, I kind of like to frame it this way. It's like, I work with a lot of people and like, not all of you are married to jerks, right? Some of you are just ma married to good humans who are having a bad day. But if you are married to a jerk, we need to figure that out sooner rather than later. Like we want to have that piece of data. You yeah. want to know, right? Yeah. And so in order to do that, we really have to clean up our side of the table in order to figure out, to like, let's shake it out and see what stays. And mm -hmm. I loved at the beginning of the episode where you said how you work through three things and these are the only three things you really need to do to, to like to have the weight you want to have. And for me, it's, there are also three things are slightly different, but there's three things that if you do these things or look at things through this lens, you can figure out what kind of marriage you want to have. And it's perspective, how you're looking at things, partnership, are you friends? Are you cultivating team? Are you roommates? Are you passionate partners? Are you sexy besties? Like all the things that elements that go into partnership. So perspective, partnership, and then pleasure. Are you having fun? Like pleasure includes physical fun that you have together, but it also includes just hanging out and laughing and spending time together. And it's like, when you address those three things, you can thrive. If you don't address those three things, like without those three things sort of running together, you can have a relationship, but it won't never get to thriving. Yeah. 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 Um, so taking action. Like today, you're going to listen to this podcast. We're going to talk about some cool things. Pick one of the things we talked about and do something with it. Mm. Take action. It's really, really important. Um, and then there's something that um, five-star hotels do 
that couples who thrive also do. And there's a great uh, resource called the Gottman Institute. They research marriages and they create interventions based on the research, their research findings. And one of the things they found is that couples who thrive, they know each other's interior world. Mm. Like they know like what upsets you, what delights you, what's going on with you. Like they don't have to have everything put together. It doesn't have to be like a fancy box, but they know each other's interior world. So I like to think about that, like building your love database. So a five-star hotel, when you come in and you order a mint tea, and a Kit Kat, they will put that in their little database. And if I go to the Ritz Carlton in Miami, and then I go to the Ritz Carlton in London, they'll say, oh, would you like a mint tea and a Kit Kat, <laughs> right? And they literally build a database on the preferences and delights of their guests. So it's like, think about right now, have you shared, whoever's listening right now, have you shared your biggest dream with your partner? Think about, do you know your partner's biggest dream? If you do, great. If you don't, ask them tonight, <laughs> right? And all those sort of little details like that. So that's a, a key in having a five-star marriage is knowing each other's interior world, building your love database, okay, that kind of thing. And then the last two are really asking the right questions. So sometimes we ask the wrong questions, right? And we spin in circles for years and years with the same problem. I know everyone mm -hmm. listening to me will have something. <laughs> that is like a persistent argument that they have with their partner that has never gone away. Mm -hmm. And if you have that, we need to ask a better question here. Very often it's as simple as this, instead of trying to solve for that problem, how do we manage that issue? Like instead of wanting the thing to go away, which we've tried for a long time and we haven't done it, how do we manage the fact that that thing is here? Yeah, yeah. What do you I think, think of that? Yeah. I think sometimes, I'm sorry, my dog is shaking yeah. like a, a, a crazy dog back there. I don't know if anybody can hear it, but <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like a lot of times, um, oh, I'm sorry, I just totally blanked. Talk, tell me what yeah. you Yeah, so about. it was that, like we have this, pro this persistent problem that oh, hasn't gone away and we're asking the wrong questions about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes, um, I think as women too, we want solutions. Like, and I think sometimes that question maybe isn't, not, not that it shouldn't get answered or it, it just, maybe it, it's not um, fleshed out enough where you guys can come to an agreement or come to a resolution. And maybe that's okay that it's lingering yeah. a little bit. And the way we would think about it is it's not a problem you solve, it's a problem you manage. Mm. Right, which is a different thing. So I'll give you one of mine. Um, I am not the most punctual person on earth, like, especially for family events or social events or things like that. Like I'm from the Cuban culture and, you know, half an hour late is early for us. If you're having like a family barbecue or something like that. And my husband is very punctual. So his family's from Nicaragua. And I think it's like a statistical anomaly. I don't know, but they're very <laughs> timely. And when we first got together, it was like, that's not going to necessarily change. Like I'm still going to have my tendency that is what I grew up with like my whole life, but how do we manage that? So he'll tell me, you know, what time we have to be in a place. I'll be like, oh, you know, if we're going to factor in some extra time, we might add some getting ready time to that. Like we manage the issue instead of expecting it to just disappear. Right. Just to give you all an example of like, <laughs> how does this work in practice? That's like one example. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I've definitely, I'm on time when it comes to business stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like right on time, but when it comes to like leaving certain things, like my husband likes to leave extra early, like if we were going to soccer or something like yeah. that, which is fine. Yeah. But he would always tell us the time, like say we have to leave at one fifteen. he tells we're going to leave at one o'clock. So everybody's ready Yeah. <laughs> in order to leave yeah. then. But, um, yeah, I think it's just uh, kind of like kind of like what you're saying in the sense of like knowing what each person, how they operate to an extent and like how, how can you both coexist yeah. with your own things, quirks. your own isms, you know? Yeah, with yeah. your own quirks and things. Sometimes you might take just separate cars. Sometimes you might decide you're leaving it a different, like <laughs> the idea of one of the ideas for me, and I think you do this in your work too, is like, it doesn't have to look like how anybody else did it. It just has mm. to work for you. Yes. 100%. And I think 
I think with marriage, we have so many cultural narratives about what it should be like. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, no, what works for you? It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else as long as it makes sense to you. And the last uh, of the seven is appreciation. So if you think about almost any company now, especially, it's like they always have like a loyalty program, right? Like how do they thank their best customers? They give you points, they give you extra things, they give you free things. There's like a very well-developed sort of recognizing loyalty when it comes to corporate things. And definitely every five-star hotel has some kind of loyalty program. So let's think about our partners. When was the last time you thanked your partner for something? Like everyone listening right now, just take a moment. Was it yesterday? Was it last week? Was it last month? Do you even remember? Right. And in marriage coaching and almost any person who helps people with better marriages, one of the very first things they will do because it works, we all do this, is express appreciation. What can you appreciate? What is going well? What has your partner done that is lovely and delightful? And appreciation to me is one of the glues that holds marriages together. It's one of the things that if you're expressing a lot of appreciation, it's kind of like you have more space to make mistakes because everybody sort of feels good about how things are going. But if you never express appreciation, it's kind of like you have less room to make mistakes because you're already starting at a deficit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, to quote the Gottmans again, I love this concept they have called the emotional bank account. So it's like you're making deposits in this emotional bank account with every time you express appreciation that allows you to then also make withdrawals (laughs) when something happens. But imagine if that emotional bank account is empty and then you go to make a withdrawal. Now you're overdrawn. It's a big problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny when you said that because yeah. the first thought um, I thought of when you were like loyalty program is a punch card, mm-hmm. <laughs> like showing your husband a punch card. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'd love to like, you know, focusing on the positive Yeah, is much, well, it depends on where I think you are in your relationship. But like when you focus on the positive, there's just more you're more happier. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know, women get together and they complain about their husbands and, and talk negative and all that. And it's kind of like, I I related to women who sit around talking about the diet that they're on and that they can't lose weight and that, you know, oh my gosh, I, I, I can't eat that piece of bread. And it just like stirs that pot of like negativity. That gets you nowhere. Yeah. 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 And it makes you feel like crap. I mean, Yeah. So for all of you listening, we know that you're not doing that, but if you are doing that, just stop right now, just stop today. (laughs) And to me, I don't think for me personally, in my um, philosophy and paradigm, it doesn't matter where you are in your relationship. You can look for the positive right now, no matter what just happened, because you want to see, is there any yeah. I have talked to people where they'll tell me, oh, this is happening and this is happening and this is happening. I'm like, okay, great. Well, tell me about the good parts. And sometimes people will then also tell me a long list of the good parts that they were ignoring. And sometimes people will tell me, uh, no, that's it. That's all that's happening. We want to see that. So when we start to go look for appreciation, now what you want to do is a lot of people are in relationships that don't have dire things happening, but there's a low grade annoyance that just doesn't go away. Mm. And that low grade annoyance is like poison. If we don't do anything about it, it will poison the relationship. So we wanna see, is your partner, I don't know, turning on the heater if it's the winter because they know that you like that. There's a lot of little things our partners do that make our life easier, Mm -hmm. that are very easy to overlook when we're upset about something. Yeah, yeah, because they're so fine-tuned they are not fine tuned, but like they're so small that you don't kind of gloss over them yeah yeah so I would invite everyone to think about something they can be grateful for with their partner and look for it no matter how tiny it may seem it's it also helps you retrain your brain to look for what is working and then you start creating more of what is working yeah I love all that yeah thank you (laughs) and I think we covered all the points all seven awesome Um, yeah. so Maggie, what, uh, where can people find you? 
So my website is maggiereyes.com. So M-A-G-G-I-E-R-E-Y-E-S.com. You can find out everything about what I have going on there. I have a podcast called the Marriage Life Coach Podcast. Anywhere you like to listen to podcasts, you can download and subscribe to that. And I talk about all these topics in depth on the podcast. Yeah. Um, touch on your book real quick, if you would. Oh, yes. So um, my book is called The Questions for Couples Journal. It is, as we talked about building your love database, knowing each other's interior world, if you're like, I don't even know where to get started on that. We haven't had a conversation that wasn't about like the mortgage or the soccer team or dinner in like the last five months, then you can go to Amazon or anywhere where you buy books. I basically had a, almost a nervous breakdown when it was in Target. I'm like, oh, my book is in Target. Ah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so anywhere you buy books, get the book. Um, it's called The Questions for Couples Journal, and it has categories. So there's things about goals and dreams. There's things about your past. There's things about um, money, sexy times, all the sort of different things. And the questions are really designed to be conversation sparkers, but not like super controversial or anything like that. The idea is to just open up a conversation with your partner. And it's so fun because I wrote the book, but while I was writing it, I wasn't like answering the questions with my partner. So every once in a while, we'll pull it out and it'll be like, yeah, that's a good question. I like that one. <laughs> it's like so fun. <laughs> um, so that's the book. Yeah, I think um, I, I always try to look at my business in the sense of like, I am my first best client. Like, yeah. so whatever I try on my clients, I for sure have gone through it or some version of it. Um, yeah. And it is always interesting because like, I know when I'm coaching some people, I'll tell them something. And then I'm like, later on, initially, as I'm coaching, the thought will come in is like, oh, I should really pay attention. Like, like just yeah. mark that, that I need to pay attention to that as well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So if anybody missed any of the links, you can definitely get them in the show notes. Um, it's going to be under the podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be there. And if you cannot find it, go to shapeitupfitness.com and just look for Maggie's episode and it will be in there as well. All right. Now it's fun time, speed round time. All right, so I know I have some um, superhero type questions that I would ask you, but I'm gonna start with, did you have a favorite TV show growing up? Yes, I had multiple favorite TV shows <laughs> growing up. Probably my number one favorite was Oprah. I would watch it after school when I got home. She's been a big influence in my life. I talk about her a lot. So I'm going to go with Oprah for that one. Awesome. Let's see. What was your first job? And it doesn't mean like official job. Like it could be a kid selling lemonade. Yeah, let's see. The very first thing I ever got paid for was doing inventory at a store that doesn't exist anymore. It's called, it was called J. Byron's. So it was kind of like a Kohl's type mm -hmm. store. I think I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was the very first thing that I ever like received money for doing. I, um, when I lived in Virginia, I worked at Dillard's, which is oh, similar yeah. to a Macy's. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh my gosh, they had me in the junior section. I, I would straighten out those jeans and literally like seconds later, <laughs> it was like a whirlwind of teenagers came in and jeans were everywhere. <laughs> it yeah. was very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I did not, I didn't care for the retail side. <laughs> um, all right, next question. If you could pick a superpower, which would it be? Oh my goodness. This is so fun because I've watched so many of my favorite actors answer this question at like cons and things. And I'm always fascinated by what they answer. Um, if I could pick a superpower, what would I pick? Oh, there's so many pros and cons to all the different ones. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say flying because why not? Let's fly. I think flying is fabulous. Just to like, especially with COVID. I mean, I could just grab a bag and fly. Just, just go. go. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to throw in one more. Okay. Who is your favorite superhero? Okay. Now that's a complex question that requires <laughs> analysis. So let's see how much time we have. Um, I actually sort of rotate through different superheroes that I really like and enjoy. So 
I, of course, love Wonder Woman, as we mentioned earlier in the episode. She's definitely one of my favorites. I grew up um, with Superman. So I used to watch the black and white old 40s or 50s show with my grandfather. So that mm-hmm. sort of has a very sentimental mm-hmm. like attachment for me. I love Captain America in the sort of more modern uh, movies. My husband always says that he's like the conscience He's like the conscience of the of the team. Oh, like, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, what's the right thing to do? And have yeah. we considered the moral compass? These, the moral <laughs> compass. Yes, right. And even when they have that civil war stuff going on, he's like, but it's what's right, even if it's hard, all of that. Um, so I sort of I, I really have to say that I can't pick just <laughs> one. I could probably give you a list of 10 more. Like, I love um the Green Arrow, which is like that's a show, it's a TV show called Arrow where there was a time in my business where I was really overworking and and it's like every single minute I was thinking about coming up with concepts and stuff like this, right? It was, yeah. it was time well spent, but but there was a time where I really needed to disconnect and sort of rest and take my brain to, to a different place. And I started watching that show on Netflix and then I started watching it like in real time. And it's a show that was sort of at a pivotal moment in my life. It just helped me process this chapter of life that I was in so I kind of get really sentimental about it even though it's just a regular superhero show right like hey, it's not publicity and the arrow is right? <laughs> publicity's the best she yeah. was a great role model for a woman in STEM who you know mm-hmm. she was the computer mm-hmm. um, genius on the show that like resolved so many things for them and that was great to see a powerful woman be critical you know to the team all those things so I could get really philosophical about the superhero situation <laughs> Yeah, I loved how Felicity, I loved when she came on as her character and how she kind of evolved yes. into the woman that she became. But yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that yeah. is so awesome. So what are your like top three favorite superheroes? Let's turn the tables, Nicole. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Hmm. Definitely, I mean, Linda Carter was definitely an influence. Um, hmm. Oh, that's, that's tough. See? Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to think. I know we were talking um, before the episode, um, Venom. Venom. <laughs> Which yeah. I, uh, I, I was telling Maggie, I had very like low expectations for this movie when it first came out, the first one. Um, Tom Hardy is in it. And I loved it. I thought it was hysterical. Um, and I just watched number two come out. Um, it was not as good as one as I thought, but, you know, still quality. Um, I don't know. I You know what it is? I love the the character part like I love there's a part of Iron Man that I just love like I love characters who are humorous Uh and kind of spunky um bold not afraid to like say what they want to say type of thing um so I'm really trying to think yeah yeah it's so fun to think about these things I love um because I also love Captain America I love his best friend Bucky Mm mm-hmm Yep. Um, and I love that sort of that wounded person who's trying to make amends and who's just on that journey in life and, and just trying to do better and be better and all like the whole, you know, emotional arc of that character, I think is really yeah. um, powerful. And I love to, I know some people probably are annoyed, but <laughs> I love yeah. that they take characters out and like tell them the backstory yeah. behind their journey um, you know, and the little spinoffs that they have of the different movies yeah. and things like that. But yeah, um, I'm drawing a blank as far as like, who would be top though? I mean, I love Supergirl. I thought Supergirl, like the original Helen yeah. Slater. Um, yeah. I like the Supergirl show that's on, or I guess they just canceled that now, but, um, yeah. Okay. So Supergirl, mm-hmm. Venom, Iron Man. Mm-hmm. I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I think the latest Spider-Man, I can't remember his name. I think he is hysterical and funny. I think he's the best Spider-Man version they've had. Um, because I'm he's just sort of like, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so, so innocent. And so just okay. to me, the epitome, because growing up, I watched, yeah. um, Spider-Man and Fire's Firestar. Firestar. Okay, Firestar yeah. has been on our list. Man. See? Yeah. <laughs> you thought everyone listening, you thought you were gonna come here to find out about the five-star marriage, which you did. Yes. But what you really needed to know were our top like <laughs> favorite superheroes. Obviously, you needed to know that. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is what we talk about before yeah. shows. <laughs> yeah. And after. Yeah. 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 What were you gonna say though? You were starting to say something. Oh no, that was it. Yeah, yeah. 
That was awesome. It. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed our banter of superheroes. And for sure, I know you loved all the tips that Maggie gave us on marriage. Definitely go check her out and uh, get her book. I'm going to have to go look in Target. Yeah. Um, let me see. You can get it on Amazon. That's really the easiest and fastest place to get it. I usually yeah. have one. Of Here we go. This is. Oh, there it is. If you can see book. it. If you're so on the if you're podcast, the it, it's square. Yeah. <laughs> If you're, yeah, if you're listening to the podcast, go to YouTube and go see me. Right, right. I'm proud of my book. Yeah, love it. We'll have to take a snapshot of that and put that on the, yeah. on the thumbnails. Love it. <laughs> All right, Maggie, thank you so much for coming on and being a guest. I really had a great time talking. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We hope you had a great episode. Yeah, yeah. We hope you had as much fun listening as we did. Recording. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody have a great day and I will talk to you next week.